Greetings viewers. Thanks for joining me out in the shop today. We're looking at, of course, a third member or a differential. And this is out of my new white third gen. Uh, it has had a Spartan locker installed, but sadly, <coughs> excuse me, it was installed incorrectly. So I have to tear that apart and I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing. I can kind of deconstruct it, show you the gears that you take out and make this a Spartan Locker install video. Uh, it's important that you mark your caps. These are already marked because the fella just put it in. I can say sadly he overlooked one simple thing. Not a big deal, not his fault, not faulting him. We all make mistakes out in the shop. But you could take these off with 12 on both sides. These are the retainers that hold these two adjustment rings in. Now another important thing, you should have a dial indicator for doing this job. So you can set your lash. Hear that moving? See how much? Hardly any. I got the gift of the eye. I can set that back without um, using a dial indicator. I recommend you use a dial indicator but I'm not going to. So all that to say, finish taking this apart. Don't put your fingers around chrome sockets either. Bad, bad. Don't use chrome sockets on your impacts. You're not supposed to do that, you know. Now I got another video where I tore the rear end apart on the third gen. Uh, to fix a shitty ARB air locker that ended up leaking again on me anyway. I got rid of that. Don't have it anymore. Always did not like those. Uh, they're great when they work and people have great success with them. I have not been one of those people to have great success with them. I keep my pieces in order on the sides there where they come out. You can unscrew these little caps here. Uh, with a punch and a hammer there's a wrench you can put on there that I don't have so I'm just going to take a little bit of tension off so these will pop out and uh, here it comes anyway there we go okay that wasn't it <laughs> Hey, let me fumble fuck around with this for just a second here. I want it to go loose. And I'm going loose, right? No, I'm going tight, so I need to go this way for loose. Okay, there, knocked her out finally. Jeez Louise. Right, bearings and everything on here look good when I rolled it it felt good um, make sure you keep your races and things on the correct side let's not bring race into this it's not an issue of race but races so ignore all that stuff about race that was pointless oh. all right moving on here these look like a 14, so let me grab a 14 real quick. Clearly, I ramble on, obviously. I don't rehearse or script or plan my videos out, but I like to share the stuff I do with you out in my shop. So you don't have to take the ring gear off. This is a V6 third. It unbolts and comes apart in two pieces. Okay, I think you need to watch me run all those out. Uh, four cylinder ones are tougher. You have to take the ring gear off, pull pieces out of the middle. The V6 ones are real nice because they bolt together. Now, the error that was made, I hope you can see all what's going on here. The error that was made ah, when you uh, put one in a V6 third, you have to remove these. These are uh, oil holder shimmy things. I'm sure they're thrust washers, I believe is what they're called. 
They help hold gear lube in place and space it properly when you have your regular side gears in. The side gears have those little washers behind them too. But you don't need them when you put your Spartan locker in. Now you reuse this side gear. I'll put it right back in there where it came out from. Nice fit in there. So you reuse those, but you take those shims off. So I'll take my locker piece out, flip it over, and set it back in that side gear like it's supposed to be. Put your springs and your pins in their proper places. And your little center washer piece goes in there. That Can you see everything I'm doing? I'm doing it way over here. So this piece here, let me take that back apart again. This this, this is all this this is all part of uh, your Spartan locker. You reuse this side gear that we took that thrust washer off of. Then you set this down on there. It's got teeths and angle on the back of it, and it engages that spider gear on the side. Okay. This is all greasy and gooey here, but <clears throat> you get the idea. This spacer also comes in the kit. It sets in there to give this the proper spacing that it needs in here. Okay, see how that all goes together? Now, if this were still an open diff like it came, these gears fit on there instead and can help differentiate. This is what makes it a locker is putting this part here in. Now, put your other ring and all together here. It's all got to come out so I can get that washer out. There's little springs in here. Right here, these are spring-loaded. And what happens when you're going straight, this pin locks it all together so it can't turn when you're going straight. But when you turn a corner or need to differentiate, the little springs in there will let this separate off your side gears just enough. I explain things so awfully. But it'll let it bounce off of there just enough that it clicks here. And you'll actually, when you're turning, you'll hear it clicking. So it kind of works like that in a ratchety way. This is the little thrust washer that needed to be removed. That was all that was forgotten. So now I'll have me a nice locker, but this will move in a clicky way. And that's how come you hear them click when you turn. Don't lose your springs. When you're dicking around with it like this to show people how it works, make sure you got your springs back in. I'm putting that one back on top of that gear now like it goes proper without the thrust washer. Put my other little spring in there. Now this is really goopy and oily, so hopefully it'll stay together <laughs> when I flip it over. I've dropped one of my little pieces here, so I'm going to pause the action. Oh, no, I'm not. I found it. So when your hands are all goopy, it's easy to drop things. So put my little spring back in. See the spring action there? Spring action here. I'm going to put this back over here for fewer things to have to move around. As I flip this over, you can actually even pop that spider gear back out. Put this all together. There's springies and uh, separate spots. Put your other two springs in these little notches. Easy peasy. It's all lined up like it goes. You can see here, I hope. The difference, my hands are all greasy, but uh, yeah, you can 
see it push in there. That's what allows it to skip around. So basically, bolt this back on, turn this over, put my bolts back in and torque them. I'm going to have to pause this and look up the torque specs on the Google machine here real quick, but I'll be right back and show you how to finish putting this together. So hold on, please. Okay, now if you're a familiar Google machine user, you know that you're going to get 67 different answers about torque specs. I found a factory service manual page that said 75 for these. And when you put the caps on the ends down here, that it takes 90 on these. Some people say crank them till you can't crank them no more, but 90 is what uh, I saw the book say. So that's what I'm going to do, Matt. You look it up yourself and decide. I'm going to put this back together and then zoom back in, show you how to adjust that backlash. Okay, it's real easy to... Uh, fumble around for a few minutes trying to get these bearing races back on the bearings and back in place but this didn't go too bad so then you take your adjustment rings uh, we'll put this one in the other side it's very very important that your threads line up proper if it gives you any fuss or fight going in try it again until they slide in real nice and turn real easy Make sure you wipe all the gook off your parts. You can run them in real easy by hand before you put the top cap on. I like to get them close. That's like way too much. Now, um, again, you got to use your, your little spanner. Usually I have a spanner that has two pins that goes in there and you can turn these, but I do not. Uh, have that as I couldn't find it. I don't know if I loaned it out, broke it, threw it last time I used it, or what. I'm going to put these caps on. Again, crucial that you line up your threads just right when you're putting your caps on. Again, they should go on with no fuss or fight. While it's all still loose, make sure that they spin easy in there. That's how you know you got it right. So run your bolts in. Now I'm not going to bolt these down until I get real close to where my backlash is. Um, well, I'll run them in, but not tighten them down to torque yet. Anyway, make sure again you get your crap wiped off. Um, some places, of course, use perfectly clean rooms and beautiful spaces. Um, I've made trail repairs in the dirt, so a uh, little bit of crud. I did sweep it first. A little bit of crud, though, doesn't really bother me. So I'm going to run these up just a little bit here to get some. A little bit. So I can turn my rings easy. And then I can adjust this. So hopefully I didn't go too much where I can still turn them by hand. No, I probably went too much. The little spanner wrench is super nice to have because I can't turn this by hand now, but I can turn it like this which isn't the worst way to do it. Way too much still. Getting closer. Way too much. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just putting that in the ring, which this one will go tighten in. But I want to make sure I get it pushed over far enough. If you got some of oh, that paint you can put on your gears to check your gear pattern. That ain't bad stuff to have either. And then still a lot. I might need to take this one out some. 
But that's all you do. You tighten this one to bring it over towards your pinion. Loosen this one to bring it over. Tighten this one to push it away from your pinion. That's still way too much. Way too much still. If you work on these a lot, it's really nice. You make you a little ring to put these in. I've seen those before, and then you can hang the whole thing down into uh, your bracket, and it's pretty sweet. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this by going back and forth here. Hang on just a second. Okay, that actually only took two or three more hits. I thought I was going to be at it for a minute. Now I'm going to make it a little tight. Now I'm going to bring this one tight now up against it just to make sure it's tight so it can't walk around. It should be pretty good and hard. I mean, like anything that's tight, you want it where it's good and snugly for sure. See, now I brought that one up where I feel like it's pretty good and tight. I'm going to bring this one back because it did push it away. You'll get a little bit of that. They both really got to be good and tight. Again, use your dial indicator here. You don't want to go so tight that you're crushing your bearings either. That's why I say, I hope I ain't shaking the camera around. Got to get her just right. Oh yeah, perfect. So now I can crank these down. I can put these little pieces in. Maybe give this one just one more. See, that's a good, bouncy, hard, solid feel. I like it. My built-in dial indicator says that is perfect. Now you put these on just for good measure to make sure that you don't lose your adjustment. I'm going to uh, crank these down a little bit more here. A couple of duggies. Then I'll put this in my vise and crank those down to what the book says is 90. But I might go 100 because another guy said go 100 to 150 if you can. And he's like a guy who rebuilds these a lot. So maybe he knows something. Uh, like I said, you look up your own torque specs and do what you feel is right on that. I say go buy the book generally, but if somebody who does it knows more than me, I might take their advice on that. So I'm going to torque these, torque or tighten these, and basically that's it. That's your Spartan Locker install, deconstruction, reconstruction. Don't forget to take these little shims out, and if you do forget, you're going to take it back apart again. But that's it. Then thanks for checking out today how to do this. Um, I got my Tundra uh, True Track to put in. I'll show you more on how to take apart. So this is a Spartan. I got a video on an ARB, and I'll have a video coming up on that True Track. Hope this didn't go on too long. Thanks for sticking with me. Appreciate you. Like, subscribe, please. Check links, all that good stuff. But most of all, thanks for checking it out today. Have a great day.